Welcome back to DMC. Now I'm going to shut up during the cutscene. Welcome to the Order. Not what I was expecting. That's the idea. The demons are amongst us, Dante. They are enslaving mankind. The world is asleep, brainwashed, and helpless. We're fighting back. We are a small handful of freedom fighters. We are the last and only line of defense. Defense? We have no chance. We don't leave things to chance. We've accumulated vast intelligence on the demons and their collaborators. World leaders, bankers, pop stars. We can hit them where it hurts. Dante, it really is you. You don't remember me. No. How much of your childhood do you remember? Uh, not much. I had meningitis when I was seven. Why my memory? Why? <laughs> they told me I had a car accident that resulted in total amnesia. Age? Seven. Your point? Meningitis is a human affliction. You are not human, Dante. All war is fought with deception, and you have been deceived. Your past has been hidden from you for a reason. Rewind a bit. Who are you again? My name is Virgil. I established the Order to help find a way to fight the demons. Besides swords and bullets, you mean? Such weapons can win battles, but not the war. We use force, yes, but... We also use intelligence, politics, propaganda. You really believe we can make a dent? Make a dent? With the two of us working together, I believe that we can defeat them. So that's what this is about. You need me to fight the demons, help you save the world. What else were you planning on doing with your life? You guys do seem really nice, but uh, more of a loner type. Trust issues, work alone, that kind of thing. Dante, I don't think you understand what is at stake. If you want to leave, turn your back on me. I'm powerless to stop you. But you'll be making a grave mistake. Not just for yourself, but for mankind. For mankind? Yes. What makes you think I give a shit? Please give me a chance to show you. Show me what? Who you really are. Yep, it's still going. Take care of that. Just be 
careful. You got rough in here. I like it. Is this really going to work? He doesn't seem to care. He's wrong. Just like you were when I first found you. Okay, gameplay. So, um, there are some lengthy cutscenes in the game. Fortunately, they pretty much are all at the beginnings and the ends of levels, so if you don't care about that, you can skip them. And additionally, for the purpose of this uh, LP, I've also added little buttons on the video that you can click if you want to skip the cutscenes. Um, by the way, in-game, I mentioned this in the previous episode, but if you want to skip cutscenes, you've got to press backspace if you're playing uh, mouse and keyboard. Enter doesn't work, um, control doesn't work, escape doesn't work. So when I first played this, I actually thought that uh, you couldn't skip the cutscenes, which made me fairly angry. But um, yeah, you can skip them, so that's always good. Anyways, this uh, second level, at least on uh, Son of Sparta mode, might give you a little bit of trouble. It's a pretty difficult one, honestly. It's funny that they uh, they actually start out with one of these really difficult levels. It's not so much on, um, you know, either normal or hard, but on very hard, yeah, it's, it's quite a challenge. And uh, I'll be showing you places where I think using the Devil Trigger works out best. And as always, showing off, um, you know, some of the collectibles and secrets along the way. There's a lost soul right there. And I think we're back to cutscene. Uh, this is one of the more cutscene heavy levels, so there's going to be a lot of that this time around. Um, but uh, the game as a whole isn't very heavy on the cutscenes, which is a good thing, because, well, I could rage for a while about how cutscenes breaking up the action is annoying to me. Regardless, um, the shield guys are a little bit of a pain. Your best bet is probably to um, use the axe and uh, use your you know your attacks from a distance until you break the shield and then you can sort of wade into the fray this seems to work the best these guys um, not a super big deal on their own the main difficulty from them comes when you have them and another group of enemies it's actually pretty easy to predict their attacks because they do have, um, you know, tells for everything, as do all the enemies in the game. But uh, again, you know, when you're already fighting a group of enemies and then one of those shows up, it gets a little bit more difficult. I don't know if he was just stuck there or what. Um, probably advised to take those guys out from a distance as well. You can hit the blades back, but um, only in certain configurations. I think the vertical one is the only one you can hit back, but I could be wrong about that. So that one, uh, don't try hitting that one back. As I uh, was kind enough to demonstrate there. Now it's funny, although I'd beaten this game before when I started recording this, uh, this series, you will actually see me get much better as the series goes on, and I figure out some of the uh, the patterns a little bit better. For instance, I shouldn't have taken any of those hits, but regardless.
Alright, these guys are pretty tough. Um, not as tough as the blue ones, though. So, these ones won't give you too much of a problem. My best advice here would be to try to interrupt their attacks by um, grabbing them with the hook. And do know that once you kill one of them, the other one's going to enter like a uh, rage mode. And be unstaggerable. But all in all, if you can get it down to just one of them, it shouldn't give you too much of a uh, problem. Then you can move on. Another lost soul right there. Not a hard one to find, but you won't be able to actually get that until you have the air dash. There's another... there's something down there. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Might be a key or something. Now, anytime you want to crowd control, pretty much the best way to begin your attack is by using the, um... the, uh... the grab for the that weapon as you will see me do most of the time. Also note that a fully charged attack from the fists will interrupt pretty much any enemy, including the chainsaw guys and the big brute guys that we'll see later on. Another good way to go is to try and keep your enemies in the air. If either you or the enemies are in the air, they're going to have a lot harder time hitting you. Like so. There's also a grab in the air, as you can see. Another pretty handy one. Once you pull them in and you just sort of use the spin attack, that's a good way to sort of maneuver them towards a corner. And that way you can just hack away at all of them at the same time. You'll see me use that strategy a lot over the course of the series. Dante. Did I hear that right? Like I said, very cutscene heavy level. However, since I feel that the story is pretty good, the voice acting is pretty good, it doesn't bug me. Although, second, third playthrough, yeah, it's probably going to get a little annoying. Fortunately, they are skippable, so there's that. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, if you're playing on very hard mode, um, you're pretty much always going to want to break open all the little pods. Uh, the reason for that being that sometimes you can actually find purple orbs inside of them. From what I can tell, it's random. But... Um, Having that little extra bit of Devil Trigger can definitely make the difference for you. So you see here, pretty much just circling around the outside and um, waiting to break the shields. And again, I do, I do sort of get better at this game as I go through, but this, uh, this works reasonably well. Once all the shields are gone, didn't break that attack though, did it? <laughs> Once all the shields are gone, then it's uh, not too big a deal taking care of these guys. Just taking hits like a madman, whatever the heck that means.
Don't worry, you don't have to fight it. Alright, time for some platforming. Fortunately, as I mentioned before, the platforming is actually quite good. Oh, yeah. If you didn't already know, the gimmick... Well, not really the gimmick, it's really a, a legitimate mechanic, not a gimmick. Um, the demonic weapons are going to pull um, objects to you, and the angelic weapons are going to pull you to objects. And we will see examples of both in this level. And all in all, it's, it's pretty cool the way it works. I like the way that the uh, platforms move once you jump on them. This is basically where you're supposed to be learning that you can uh, pull enemies to you and break guards with it, but uh, yeah. Anyways, you see what I mean about how the platforms move when you jump on them? It's a really nice touch. They could have just had them, you know, sit there. Another lost soul right there. Secret door. Yeah. Something else under there again, I can't remember what. Don't worry about following her. You have to go over here and kill these bugs. Seriously, isn't that awesome, the way it, it does that? I think so. Once again, best advice on this part is to stay in the air. That way you don't have to deal with the bombs. Obviously you can hit the bombs back, but I, at least personally, haven't been able to reliably do that when there are a ton of enemies on me. What is kind of fun is to have them throw the bombs and then pull them into their own attacks.
really. There we go. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but we're not going to be using any uh, healing or anything in this run. That would just be silly. We're going all or nothing, one take, that kind of thing. Well, one straight take. I may redo takes, but everything you see is from one run. Is that... Mom? Oh look, it's the it's the thing from from earlier with the thing. We already knew that, yeah. Okay. Sorry, the cutscenes on this level are a little bit excessive. Okay, so now we have the blue enemies. Obviously, they can only be hurt by angelic weapons, which is a little bit of a pain because. Um, the angelic weapons don't tend to stagger enemies as much, or be as good at breaking shields. Now, you can break shields with the uh, scythe, but it's not going to work as well as the axe, so you might have a little bit of trouble. However, once the shield does break, um, you're not going to have too much trouble with these guys. Again, that's that's the main thing. If you can break the shields as quickly as possible, then you can just sort of do that. And one thing that I will learn a little bit later on in the series is that using this move to crowd control is actually a pretty effective strategy. You can basically just take a couple enemies out of the fight not bad. And that's sort of the key to uh, to playing the higher difficulties is that crowd control kind of thing. More so than um, really the combos, it's the positioning that's most important. As you can see, always circle towards the outside. You don't want to ever end up in between all the enemies. And then just use this and basically walk them towards where you want them to go. Alright, now these guys, the Dream Runners. Um, I have a bit of trouble with them in this one, but uh, they're actually not very hard. The main trick is to uh, basically get their pattern down. And what I mean by that is you're going to want to wait for them to disappear and then counter them as they dash at you, which I didn't quite understand at this point, apparently. You can dodge out of the way, for sure, that works, and then get in a couple hits, but um, the best way is actually to just attack them in the middle of their attack. I would not recommend using your Devil Trigger here because there is a part a little bit later that you're going to need it for. Now a couple uh, moves that work pretty well for countering these guys. If you use the fists and you charge up an uppercut when they disappear, that works pretty well. You can also charge up the uh, this move. That works pretty well also. Th these guys really aren't even that hard and I just, I'm just coming very close to losing here. Just wait till the later levels where you have to fight three of them at the same time. Or is it two? Regardless, it's difficult.
Okay, now's the time to whip out that uh, Devil Trigger if you still have it. Kill these guys as quickly as possible because they do not get staggered by your attacks for the most part. And that is not a good thing for you. There we go. If you can kill one of them, then the other one shouldn't be too hard. Again, just sort of wait for the rage to wear off, and then you can stagger him again. That's that. Believe me, that would have been much more difficult had I not had the uh, double trigger. Another lost soul right there. That is that. By the way, the most effective way to deal with these is to use that move. Not that move. There we go. <laughs> if you have the air dash, you can get over that for another lost soul. And a secret door. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, just waiting. Okay, more platforming. Now we're going to learn how to use the other hook, basically. These parts are a little bit boring because they're basically just tutorial, but, um, you know, at least the game chooses to teach you by doing, which is always a good thing, instead of just um, giving you a text box, basically. And for sure, you do feel cool doing the... Uh, the grappling. Yeah, yeah, turn into a hook. I love how he looks back at it, like he already knows it's gonna change this time. It's actually kind of funny. Never thought you'd see a uh, Devil May Cry game that actually had decent platforming, did you? Indeed. So you can you can definitely see the uh, pull yourself towards an enemy to make it to the edge, that sort of thing. But uh Still, teach by doing, yes, it's the best way. And then it does get more interesting, obviously, later in the game when they actually have you combine the two. Once again, I will say that I played through the entire game with mouse and keyboard, and works incredibly well. Q is angelic, and E is demonic. And that makes uh, pulling off the platforming pretty pretty easy honestly it's very intuitive and it works quite well honestly I wouldn't even say that I think it would be better with a controller so yeah what am I on 
Don't worry, we won't find that out for a few more episodes. Alright, more stuff to kill. It's always always a welcome sight. Multiple chainsaw guys, not the best thing in the world for you, but it's also not the worst. Um, one good way to go is to use the, um, the fists and sort of do the uh, slam the ground move from above. And that'll sort of interrupt most of them. What I was choosing to do at this point was to uh, use the axe to break the shields, however. And again, staying in the air, always a good thing to do. As long as you have enemies to hit, you can actually stay in the air forever, which is pretty cool. Because gravity, that's not a thing we need. I think at this point I was just being a little bit too cautious because I'd already had to retake this video several times. And um, going through all the cutscenes multiple times in a row, yeah, that was a little bit obnoxious. This really is a lot easier than I'm making it look. One thing that I've noticed, and this is just an observation, so I don't know if it's actually true, it seems like if you're not looking at the enemies, they are less likely to attack you. And I could be wrong, but I don't know, it just seems like this is the case, so good move. Um, for instance, those big like Goliath type guys, there are portions in the game where I will just sort of turn my back on them for like 30 seconds at a time, and they don't seem to do anything. Somebody can either confirm or deny that. That'd be interesting to know, because if so, that is a legitimate strategy. And maybe I'm, I'm just lucky, or maybe I'm just good at positioning Dante so that they don't actually have an opportunity to attack him. I don't know. Also notice it's not all that difficult to get to a triple S. It's mostly just about the amount of damage you do. Obviously just doing the same combo over and over isn't going to help that much, but um, it's a lot easier to get the highest rank than in, say, Devil May Cry 1. I do like the uh, visual style during the cutscenes as well. It looks pretty nice. They broke in. I saw him. She gave her life so that we could escape. I will never forget what he did to her. Father, Sparta, to 
my brother and I away. You separated us. It is safely amongst the humans. Wiped our memories to protect us. That's why it all went black. Until now. Okay, almost there. I promise that the uh, future levels will not be this cutscene heavy. Whee! Look at that, so cool. It's like the level itself actually just wants to kill you. I think there's a thing over there and that's why I was doing that. And that, as they say, is that. Okay, so next time we will return to a level that actually has gameplay in it. Um, it's, it's nice that they crammed most of the exposition into one level, so it gets better from here. Anyways, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I will see you on the next one.